friends, my dear elders in Islam, all praises for Allah, the Lord of the universe that gave hidayah to whomsoever he wants. If Allah chooses to bless someone, none can deprive that person. If Allah chooses to deprive someone, none and nobody can bless that person. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ If Allah had not blessed us with hidayat, then we would not have been blessed. If Allah had not chosen to guide us on the straight and narrow path of Islam, what we make dua for in every salah, in every rakaat, in Surah Al-Fatiha, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, show us the straight path and guide us along the straight path. Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim, Ghayri Al-Maghdubi Alayhim, Waladhaalleen, the path of those that you have favored, not the path of those that you have shown your anger upon, and not the path of those that are misled implying the Jews and the Christians. The straight path to Allah is the path of Islam. Those people that Allah has favored are the Prophets. The path of Anbiya alayhi musalatu wa taslim is the straight path as they are those that Allah has favored. The path of the truthful people is the straight path. The path of the martyrs is the straight path, the shuhada wa salihin. And the path of those people that are pious and abstain from ma'asiyah and sins and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that person who is obedient to Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will be in such company of such individuals. And what good company these people truly are. This is the blessing of Allah and Allah is sufficient in his knowledge. Allah knows whatever there is to know. So Allah blessed us with Islam. And we thank Allah for having given us Islam and made us Muslims and raised us in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is a blessing of Allah and such a blessing of Allah that if all the heavens and the earth and whatever they contain were to be placed on one side of the balance and Islam and Iman the blessing that Allah has given to us was to be placed on the other pan of the balance, then the one blessing of Islam would outweigh everything. The blessing of Islam will be heavier on the scales than all the world put together. SubhanAllah. This is the ni'mat of Allah. This is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has chosen us for. <coughs> Only those people that Allah chooses enter into Islam. Subhanallah. Being born Muslims, we don't really appreciate Islam. But those people, mashaAllah, who appreciate Islam and thank Allah for all the ni'mas that He has blessed them with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the tawfiq to carry out more good deeds. Subhanallah. That person who is grateful to Allah, Allah gives more. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ Allah has announced that if you are grateful to me, I will give you more. But if you are ungrateful to me for any of my favors, I will then, then be aware my punishment is very severe. So to be grateful to Allah... لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah has favored us with the Prophet ﷺ and 
And Allah has favored us with Islam. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْ لَا أَنْحَدَانَ اللَّهِ Subhanallah. Sometimes Allah chooses to bless with Islam people who don't want it. People who have no intention of becoming Muslims and they are carrying out such acts Allahu Akbar of haram and have such evil intentions but Allah can change the hearts as Allah is muqallib al qulub Allah is the changer of the hearts Subhanallah the story of Umair bin Wahab is real inspiration <coughs> Umair bin Wahab was one of the kuffar of Mecca who had such hatred for Islam, Allah Akbar Kabira. And he had hatred for the Muslims. And he longed for Islam to perish and come to an end. He was sitting outside the Kaaba with Safwan bin Umayyah after the Battle of Badr took place. Umayyah bin Wahab had a son who the Muslims had captured at the Battle of Badr. And Umair now had more enmity for the Muslims because his son was a captive amongst them. Subhanallah, he sat down with Safwan bin Umayyah. When Safwan <coughs> said to Umair, Oh Umair, the Muslims need to be stopped in their tracks. They've gone too far now. And uh, Umair replied, well, if it wasn't for my family members, if it wasn't for my responsibilities, if it wasn't for the debt which I have, I would have gone straight to Medina and na'udhu billah killed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Safwan bin Umayyah jumped at the opportunity and said, Umayr, would you really do that? And he replied, yes, of course. If it wasn't for all my responsibilities, I would end this task, subhanallah. Safwan said, well, Umayr, I take full responsibility of your family. Your debts are my debts, I will repay them all. All your responsibilities, leave them to me. And go and carry out this task. Subhanallah. Umayr bin Wahab, thereafter, had dipped his sword in poison, as was the way of the time. Sharpened his sword, dipped it in poison, and carried it on his back. Went straight to Medina Munawwara where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba were. Umar radiallahu and from a distance he saw Umair bin Wahab entering Medina Munawwara. Straight away Umar radiallahu an subhanallah what a man he was as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that they are those people whom Allah inspires and from my Ummah, Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu an is one of them. His thoughts were such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reveal verses of the Holy Qur'an according to the thoughts that Umar radiyallahu an would have. But this was also because of the reflection of the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was through the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nevertheless, Umar radiyallahu an at the time he saw Umayr bin Wahab enter into Medina Munawwara. He said, Kalbun o Khinzir. Subhanallah, what a man. This appears to be a man with evil intentions. And he either used the word of dog or a pig. Because Umar radiallahu an, he knew Umayr bin Wahab at the time. And he knew the hatred he had for the Muslims and how he fought in Badr against the Muslims, and whenever the Muslims were in Mecca, he would put them through torture. Umar said, Umayr has come with evil intentions. And he went straight to the Prophet ﷺ after leaving instructions, do not let him come near to the Prophet ﷺ and protect him. And the Prophet ﷺ was informed that Umayr bin Wahab has come with evil intentions, O Messenger of Allah. And, and the Prophet ﷺ <coughs> said, let him come. Let him come into my company. And Umayr bin Wahab, he came 
Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, O oh, Umayr, what brings you to Medina? He said, well, my son is captive. I want my son to be released. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Is that all you have come for, O oh, Umayr? What about your sword? He said, oh, this sword, it's never done me any good. What a, what a cheap sword it is. And um, it's failed me many a times. And the Prophet ﷺ replied, Well, Umayr, is that your only intention that you have come for? And Umayr said, Of course, that's my only intention. He lied. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, Umayr, what about the time when you were sitting outside the Baytullah, the Kaaba? And there was nobody there except you and Safwan bin Umayyah. And at that moment you spoke of your debts and your responsibilities and your family members. And Safwan said he would look after and take care of all of them. And then you came with the task of killing me to Medina Munawwara. And you thought nobody was there but Allah was also there. And Allah's knowledge is overpowering and Allah's knowledge is absolute and Allah knew of what you had done and Safwan and you, Umayr, why do you lie to me today? The Prophet ﷺ said these words and it struck Umayr bin Wahab's heart and he said there was nobody present there at the time only Allah could have informed you you are indeed no magician, you are indeed no liar I bear testimony and I testify that there is none worthy of worship but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Sallallahu Allahu Akbar. A man who came to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam entered into the fold of Islam through the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umayr bin Wahab. Allahu Akbar. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba rejoiced at the Islam of Umayr bin Wahab. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Release his prisoner, give his son back to him. And Umayr thereafter lived his life in Medina Munawwara. And the Prophet ﷺ gave instructions to the Sahaba, teach him Islam. Teach him from the Islam that you know. And look after him. And uh, subhanAllah, he became very knowledgeable. Now Safwan in, in Makkah al-Mukarramah would anticipate the arrival of caravans from Medina. And he would ask, what happened? What's happening? He would be... Longing for the news that something has happened and Allahu Akbar Safwan would be waiting until someone informed him that Umayr has become a Muslim and Ubaid bin Wahab he asked permission of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Oh Messenger of Allah allow me to go to Mecca so I can invite them to Islam as I have influence amongst them and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed him he went straight to the home of Safwan bin Umayyah and told him, I have become a Muslim, you should do so as well. I have become a Muslim, why do you worship the idols which give you no benefit? They can't even hear you, they can't even benefit from you at all. Why do you worship them? Worship the one Allah who made you and your parents. And Umayr bin Wahab thereafter lived his life inviting to Allah and giving da'wah ila Allah. SubhanAllah. This is an individual who went with cruel intentions. But when Allah chose to change his heart, it didn't take much. Allah is muqallib al-qulub. Allah is the changer of the hearts. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. O changer of the hearts, keep our hearts on your deen. One of the du'as we should make. Subhanallah. So Umayr bin Wahab became one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah blessed him with Islam. And as soon as he became a Muslim, he wanted to invite others to Islam as well. This should be the thirst inside us of inviting others to Islam. This is a duty upon us. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Oh my messenger, tell the people that my duty is to invite to Allah. عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي With the wisdom. This is also my way and the way of all those who claim to be my followers. <coughs> Allah's Messenger 
has laid it down for us very, very clearly. That we claim to be the follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we have to invite to Allah. We have to tell people of Allah. We have to invite people to Islam with wisdom. This is our responsibility, subhanAllah. By showing them what is right. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Whose word can be better than the word of that person who says, I am a Muslim and he does good deeds? Whose word can be better than his? Who invites to Allah. مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ So this is the best word. This is the best form of speech. To invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Evil and goodness are not the same. If someone is evil towards us, if someone shows us bad character, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةِ إِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Then by being good to them, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Then despite the hatred and despite the enmity, and despite all the ill feelings which one might possess for us, because of our good character, it will be as if we were always the best of friends. The Quran says, كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ hamim." By showing some good character, this is how Allah has made the hearts. That when someone is good to us, despite all the years of, of ill treatment, كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ hamim," He will become the best of the friends. So this is the example of all those non-Muslims out there who might have seen the wrong side of Islam, who might have hatred for Islam. But if as Muslims we are able to invite them to Islam with good character and show them the truth in a positive way, in the best way, and give it a sugar coating, then this will inshallah inspire them to come to Islam. This will impress them and they will come to Islam. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا But only those that remain firm can acquire, can acquire such qualities and sifat and carry out this deed. Those that remain firm and persevere and have patience. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَ إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ And those people that have a great share, only these people can do such things. So we should move ourselves forward. We should advance. How my days can be spent inviting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nowadays we have left the Holy Quran. Very few of us recite the Holy Quran. One of the complaints the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make to Allah on the day of Qiyamah, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا That my ummah, my people, they abandoned the Holy Quran. So we should recite Quran in abundance. Allocate a chapter for ourselves, or a quarter of a chapter, or a few pages even to begin with, on a daily basis. SubhanAllah. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, اِقْرَأُوا الْقُرْآنِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعًا لِأَصْحَابِ Recite the Holy Quran, because the Quran will come on the day of judgment as an interceder for its reciter. It will intercede in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah was to say to an individual, I will punish you, or punishment was to come his way, the chapters of Quran that he would recite would come before Allah. Ya Allah, Surah Mulk Tabarak al would come before Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And say, Ya Allah, if you want to punish him, then take me out of Quran. It will fight, it will plead, it will demand that its reciter be forgiven. And will Allah take Surah Mulk out of the Qur'an? Of course not. Allah will forgive the reciter. Allah will forgive all of his sins. This is the power of Qur'an. The Qur'an is very powerful. It should be given preference to all other words. وَفَضْلُ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ سَائِلِ الْكَلَامِكَ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ خَلْقِ the comparison of the Qur'an to all the other words is the comparison of Allah over His creation. Subhanallah. The Qur'an should be recited. He who recites one letter of Qur'an, Allah will give him ten good deeds. 
Alif, Lam, Mim is 30 good deeds because there are three letters Alif, Lam, and Mim. Khayrukum man ta'allam al Quran wa allama. The best people amongst you are those people that learn and teach the Quran. Why? Because in learning the Quran, we are preserving Islam. And in teaching the Quran, we are propagating Islam. And for any way of life, and for Islam to continue, it needs to be preserved and propagated. Allahu Akbar. Hence, we are including ourselves in the best of the people. The father of that person who memorizes the Quran, on the day of Qiyamah, will be rewarded with such a crown, such a crown, that it will be shinier than the sun. Allahu Akbar. The father of the Hafid al Quran. Memorizing the Quran is, subhanAllah, so rewarding in the eyes of Allah. Then the Prophet said, If this is the reward for the father, then what do you think the reward will be of the one who memorizes it himself? SubhanAllah. So the reward is out there. Allah wants to bless. Allah has given us the Quran for us to hold on to. As an ummah, we need to invite more people to Islam and hold on to the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and become a part of an ummah which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam trained as Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'in have left behind examples. So these lessons that we learn, Umar bin Wahab radiyallahu an came into the fold of Islam through the mercy of Allah. So if we invite to Islam and Allah shows mercy upon someone, it's a bargain for us. Allah will use us for his deen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us an equal share of whatever good deed such people carry out. May Allah make us amongst these people. May Allah make us amongst those that try to invite others to Islam and succeed.